Pokemon don't really need an introduction, and I'm sure you are tired of every single Pokemon video giving you a synopsis of the franchise at the beginning, so let's just jump right in. Pokemon, as you know, essentially are the animals of the Pokemon world. You have squirrels, deers, camels, cows, cats, dogs, and there are even some based on mythical animals in there too, but mythical animals are still animals, while Clink Clang is a pile of gears, and Steelix is metal-coated boulders. Odd. In fact, the whole steel type, or metal type in the card game, lineup of Pokemon seems strange. Steel isn't found anywhere in nature, it's a man-made thing. So where would so many Pokemon get steel coating and parts? Well, what if on these Pokemon it isn't actually steel? What if it's not steel, then what type of metal is it? For each Pokemon individually, that is. And that is exactly what this video is about. What type of metal specifically are each of the steel type Pokemon? Because they can't all be steel, clearly. The Steel type was introduced in Generation 2, along with the Dark type. This was to balance out the other types a bit. Steel was added to the typing of two Gen 1 Pokémon, Magnemite and Magneton, which previously were only Electric type. Steel type Pokémon stand out from the crowded mass of Pokémon for having great defense against both physical and special attacks, and a large number of resistances. Also, they tend to be heavy, and thus have low speed. Steel type Pokémon are mainly inorganic in nature, some of them even representing robots and machines, which just raises all sorts of questions, but those are for another video. Out of all the Pokémon, there are only five pure Steel-type Pokémon as of Gen 7, and this is including Mega Evolutions. The four pure Steel are Registeel, Clink Clang, and Clink Clang. Beautiful names. Beautiful Pokémon. And then there's also Mega Aggron. So, five. That's not very many. But there are plenty of Pokémon that mix Steel and another type. 47 of them to be exact. So in total, with our pure ones, we get 51. So first, let's break these down into categories. For the first category, we're going to look at Pokémon that eat rocks or metal and then use the minerals they ingest to create its hard metal shell. Here we get the Aaron line and the Pharoseed line. Aaron is loosely based off of a Korean mythical animal named Bulgasari, a creature that eats metal and then grows in size, covering itself in the metal that it has ingested. Being that the Aaron line eats rocks, perhaps common rocky metal specifically, and that its name is Aaron, which pulls from iron, iron, it is made very clear that this line is made of mostly iron, or similar top-level metals. Although they are not pure iron, as they can eat any metal they can get a hold of, even going as far as to eat train tracks, because that's what the Pokémon world needs, more train crashes. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, no problem! But the combination of eating rocks and metal could be why they have rockier bottoms and insides and a more steel-like top shell. Steel, after all, is iron and carbon. This would explain the rock steel typing, too. And when Aggron Mega evolves, it loses the rock typing to become pure steel. And looking at it, yeah, now it has an all-steel shell, trading in all of the iron for more steel. The Pharaoh Seed line is similar in appearance to a durian a spiky fruit that tastes like lemon grabs butt and bread. They are known to absorb the iron in the cave walls they stick to, forming bands around themselves to protect them from predators. Thus, both Pharaoh Seed and Pharaoh Thorn are covered in iron, especially given the name, since Pharaoh means to contain iron. Both of these Pokémon likely make their shells much like how turtles make their own shells, as an extension of their bones. Bones are made up of organic and inorganic pieces. In this instance, we are going to say their bones are inorganic, or at least the minerals the Pokémon ingest are inorganic, so therefore they are made from inorganic parts. Human bones are made up of collagen and uh, hydroxyapatite. Hydro-XY appetite. hydro I don't... Uh this word, which is a form of calcium. Quick fact, calcium is technically a metal, so we do have metal skeletons. Way more on that here, a video about what life would be like if you woke up one day with Wolverine skeleton. It's pretty cool, check it out. So are humans in the Pokemon world part steel type too? Uh, nah, nah, we're probably just all normal type, just simple, boring normal type. So uninteresting and uninspired, just like normal type Pokemon. Next are the steel type Pokemon that wear metal as armor or for tools. It's not explained fully as to where they get the metal. Some possibly find the metal and slowly form it to their needs, or they have stolen the items from other Pokémon that create metal. In this group, we have Trash Coat Wormadam, Excadrill, Empoleon, Excavalier, Ponyard, Bisharp, Fortress, Steelix, Mega 
Steelix Scizor, Dialga, and Genesect. First, let's look at Wormadam, a bagworm Pokemon. Bagworms at birth create a small bag that they hide in, and they cover it with local plant pieces or really anything that they think will be sufficient camouflage. The trash coat is what Wormadams in the city wear, and it looks like it is made up of insulation or fiberglass that was thrown into the garbage. This may not be metal, but fiberglass is quite strong for its size. Fiberglass can actually be stronger than sheet metal along with the benefits of not rusting. And now is a really good time to cover something that I think more Pokemon fans really need to understand. Being a certain type of Pokemon doesn't mean that the Pokemon is that thing. Like how in this video, Steel-type Pokemon aren't necessarily made of steel exactly. Specifically steel. No, they're not. They just have steel-like properties. Much like how not all ghost-type Pokemon are actually ghosts. They just have ghost-like properties. So, Wormadam's trash coat doesn't have to actually be metal just because it's steel-type. It just has to be hard enough. Hard as steel, so to speak. And thus, being like steel makes them steel-type. This logic also covers Foratris, another bagworm Pokemon whose Pokedex entries state that it has a steel-hard shell. So hard as steel, but not actually steel. Until later, when later Pokedex entries state that its shell is steel, but then again that it's just hard as steel. <laughs> this is why you don't let kids write out encyclopedias, so we don't really know about Foratress thanks to these darn kids! Moving on now, Escavalier is a bug-steel combo, which really only has a weakness to fire. This Pokemon gains its armor from a fellow bug named Shelmet. This armor is reminiscent of Calvary's armor plating down to the lance weapons, and that also explains the name. This armor back in the day was made of some decent steel or iron. It is unknown as to why Carablast takes Shelmet's armor, just that it happens while trading. Something goes wrong and the two Pokemon gain the traits of the other. This is also the only way Escavaliers exist. They don't evolve in the wild and need to be with a trainer trading it. So this armor being a strictly man-made material and designed to even look like a man-made material isn't too big of a stretch. Steelix and Scizor both gain their metal coats when they are traded while holding the metal coat item. This means at some point during the apparently magical trading process, the metal coat literally coats the Pokemon, though the Pokedex also states that Steelixes can form naturally. The iron that Onyx eats and the pressure deep underground cause it to gain a steel-like body harder than any other metal, even harder than diamond. Naturally speaking, chromium is the hardest metal, though the man-made steel is the hardest alloy. Being stronger than any metal means that Steelix must be some sort of hypersteel. But remember, it is only coating the Steelix. As for Scizor, its Pokedex entries state that its body has the hardness of steel, rather than being actually made of steel, but it does mention that its claws contain steel. Steel may be spread throughout Scizor's exoskeleton, but it's an alloy of sorts, mixing metal with your usual exoskeleton material. Dialga is a large dragon that controls and even created time in the Pokemon universe. You know, the one that 11-year-olds run around with. Well, based off his appearance and his typing, he most likely has horns or metal-like horns that adorn his body. It is possible that his steel typing comes from the hardness of diamonds, or perhaps that clocks normally have metal gears. And you know, clocks equals time, and he's time, so... Metal. If we're looking for a metal known for its hardness, then the metal on Dialga may be chromium, due to its extreme hardness and similarities to diamond, both in shiny appearance and in strength. Plus, being directly created by the Pokemon god Arceus as a Pokemon just basically one level below him, Dialga can basically be anything, and it would still make sense. Probo Pass is quite hilarious looking with a huge schnoz and funny mustache. Wait, that mustache, where have I seen those before? Uh, there was like these magnetic toys that you'd see at the dollar store. What were they called? Uh, Google, help. Wooly Willy. These toys were filled with metal shavings, mostly iron, and they would gather around an internal magnet, and this isn't too far off with Probopass, as we see Nosepass evolve into Probopass only while leveling up in a highly magnetic zone, meaning that the mustache you see is actually iron shavings. While this Pokemon appears to not be made of metal exactly, it may contain a mix of magnetic elements, possibly being steel mixed with cobalt for the longevity of magnetism. This, of course, would explain the whole compass gimmick Probopass has. Ponyard and Bisharp have knife-like hands or arms with a bladed ribcage. Ponyard is based off a pawn and a ponyguard, which is a small dagger, and it looks like it's wearing Ashigaru armor. 
which was Japanese foot soldier armor. Being based off of Japanese foot soldiers, it's definitely made of iron and steel, most likely low grade. Its weapons would also be made of low grade steel, just like katanas and other ancient Japanese blades, while its armor is made of iron plates about the size of cards. Bisharp has a double-bladed axe on its head. This Pokemon is a direct upgrade from Ponyard. First off, it doesn't have the word pawn in it. This Pokemon resembles a samurai, but again, the armor is most likely just iron, and its weapons are again, low-grade steel. It is unknown if this Pokemon is born with the knives and armor or if it finds or makes them. And yes, I know, I know, if you hatch it, it has knives and armor, but that's for gameplay mechanics, not lore, you know? Moving on, Genesect. This poor creature was transformed from its normal extinct self into a weapon of mass destruction by Team Plasma. Much like Mewtwo, this Pokemon was made by science. It has an alloy exoskeleton that either replaced the exoskeleton of the bug Pokemon or covers it. It also had a large cannon attached to its back. Being a high-grade military weapon made by science, Genesect's armor is very likely to be made of high-grade reinforced titanium, or a high-grade titanium steel alloy. Titanium has one of the highest weights to strength ratios for metals. It also happens to resist corrosion and oxidization. I mean, at least if I were to make a robot of mass destruction, I'd make it out of a titanium alloy. Now on to the next category. We have Pokemon that have adapted to their environment by adding the steel typing. Here we have Sandslash, Sandshrew, Diglett, and Dugtrio. Alolan form Sandslash and Sandshrew had to migrate away from their normal locations due to volcanic activity on its home island, causing these Pokemon to need to adapt to snowy peaks. The typing changed accordingly, and it is now covered in a thick ice armor and has harder claws so it can better move in the icy terrain. This thick layer of ice on its back forms an almost steel-like armor around its body, preventing it from rolling up into a ball but giving it much more defense. Sandshrew's claws, though, are most likely a hardened keratin that help it grip the ice better. Keratin, of course, being normal claw material. When it evolves, though, Sandslash has large icicles upon its back. The icicles form when the metal spike beneath freeze in the cold climate. It also has much larger claws than its desert counterpart, and these claws are even hooked to help it climb icy cliffs. Hence, they have an ice axe-like design, thus have steel-like properties, but may still be made of hardened keratin. Alolan form Diglett and Dugtrio have small golden metal hairs that act as a sensor so they can communicate while underground, and that they use to avoid pockets of lava. This hair is similar to Pele's hair, named after a Hawaiian goddess. It's made when volcanoes erupt and small droplets of lava cool and stretch in the air, and then get caught on something. These strands act similarly to fiberglass and have a large amount of basalt in them, a metal used to make rebar. It is assumed that they gather these hairs and put them on, shaping it into whisker-like hair, so while it may look luxurious, if you ever were to pet a Dugtrio, well, Death by a thousand paper cuts, my friends. So far, we've covered the Pokemon that don't show magically organic metal traits, just ones that have metal parts that they collect or are coated with. Now we will get to the Pokemon that are or have metal parts that act as the organic matter. Mawile, Mega Mawile, Beldum, Matang, Metagross, Mega Metagross, Bronzor, Bronzong, Cabalion, Honage, Doblade, Aegislash, Klefki, Magnemite, Magneton, Magnezone, Lucario, Heatran, Durant, Togedemaru, Magirna, Solgaleo, Celesteela, and Kartana. Durant, Togedemaru, Riolu, and Lucario are Pokemon that have metal on the outside of their body that grows or regrows with no direct correlation between their diet and minerals. Durants have grown armor to protect against their enemies of Heatmore, the anteater, though the only thing effective against them is fire, so their strategy didn't work very well at all. Uh... Though the thing is, Durant's diet consists of leaves and vegetation, and it would take a lot, and I mean a lot, of broccoli to get that much iron. Originally I figured that this must just mean that they have an iron-like exoskeleton, but no, it is directly stated that it is in fact steel armor. It is unknown if they make the armor grow around them, or if they they just coat themselves in it, so we'll just go with the safe bet of it's magically organic metal. And since organic metal doesn't actually exist, it can have whatever quality it wants. Yay fiction. Same goes for Togemaru. This small hedgehog Pokemon has metal quills upon its back that attract electricity. The quills fall out and are replaced just like normal hedgehog quills, and their diet consists of berries and plants, so again, there's no direct mineral transfers like the Aaron line. Riolu and Lucario don't really have a reason to be steel other than the iron spikes on its body. It is stated that Lucario has a heart of steel and an iron will, but those are intangible things. 
there are a few theories floating around, like he has a metal skeleton, though when you say the Japanese syllables backwards, his name is Orichalcum, an ancient mythical metal. He may use this mythical metal as a way to channel or conduct auras. This also comes from the pronunciation of Orichalcum. Aura... Calcum, as in the aura, and it's the metal, it's a, it's a pun. It is a little bit of a stretch, but he is seen using the steel-type move metal sound in the anime by hitting his spikes together, so we do know for sure that his spikes are metal. So the spikes on Lucario could be steel or calcum. <laughs> Mawile and Mega Mawile are Pokemon based off of a yokai called Futakuchi Ona. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. It's a two-mouthed woman. In the Pokedex entries, they state that the second mouth is an altered steel horn. What that means, I don't know. Was it a steel horn and then it became a mouth, or were, are the teeth steel? It could be much like the Aran line, and it gets minerals from the rocks in the caves that they inhabit. It is also possible that the typing she has is based on her appearance of a bear trap, or a steel trap as they're also called. This metal is going to have to be a type of steel though, as it is stated as being strong enough to crush iron beams. And steel, of course, is stronger than iron. As for Jirachi... Hmm, why is this one even a steel type? Well, Jirachi is based off of a shooting star, as it grants wishes, i.e. the psychic part of its type. Well, what are shooting stars? Shooting stars are normally meteors that are burning up in the atmosphere. Normally, the most spectacular shooting stars are the ones made of iron or nickel, as these are both very common metals that are found everywhere in space. I'm leaning a bit more towards nickel, since you can also throw a coin into a well and make a wish. Eh? Yeah, you know? Huh? Hmm? Maybe? Huh? I don't know. Cobalion, or Cobalion, is described in Pokedex entries as having a body and heart of steel. Its glare is sufficient enough to make even an unruly Pokemon obey it. The Swords of Justice group of Pokemon are based off of the Three Musketeers. Cobalion specifically is based off of Athos, the oldest and commonly referred to as the leader of the Three Musketeers. In Pokemon, this translates into it being cold, stern, and strong, all common characteristics of metal. Cobalt is also a part of his name, which is a metal that is known to help steel resist high temperatures. This may be a metaphor for how it keeps its cool head, much like the Musketeers. Cobalt is also known for being blue-tinted, so Cobalion having a body of steel may actually be a body coated in Cobalt. Belda, Matang, Metagross, Mega Metagross, Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnezone are all either made of solid metal or are construct-like creatures. These Pokémon may give us a glimpse into the way these metal Pokémon in general work. All these Pokémon communicate and control their bodies with electromagnetic pulses and by sending magnetic waves to repulse Earth's gravity. They do not need to eat, but they do sleep, perhaps to literally recharge. With magnetism being a large factor in these living constructs, they are most likely made of a very magnetic metal. It's hard to say what metal is the most magnetic, as magnetism is a force, but it's possible that the accents on these Pokémon are made of neodymium, iron, and boron. When these three metals are combined, they make a neodymium magnet. This is one of the strongest non-electromagnetic compounds, but the magnet Magnemite line are electric type 2, so they could be made of silver, or alnico, a mixture or alloy of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt that is amplified with electricity. Pokemon that are similar are Honage, Dublade, Aegislash, and Magirna. They are all metal objects or constructs that are seemingly possessed by a soul, be it artificial or real, whatever that means. Magirna is stated as to having a steel body that was created 500 years ago. If that was 500 years ago today in our world, that would be only 1517, and steel has been found as as old as 1800 BC. Yeah, that, that's right, BC. That's 3,817 years ago that we were starting to mess with steel in our weapons and tools. So only 500 years ago? It's totally possible then that they had a good enough manufacturing process to create a construct of this complexity. It's some seriously real Da Vinci stuff. Honage, Dublade, and Aegislash are all possessed swords that are made of common steel. While Aegislash may appear gold, it is most likely a decoration or thin layer of gold or golding agent to give the appearance of gold which was common for the more decorative swords of kings, but gold itself is far too soft to be used on a sword. There is also the Kling Kling line, being pure steel type, and being literally gears that are alive somehow. And being that they began existing during the Industrial Revolution, it's easy to point to the steel gears that were used during the time period, and say that Kling Kling is literally that, but alive. But then Reggie Steel gets interesting. It's stated that its body can never be scratched. Never? Really? 
There are scratch resistant metals, but with enough force you can scratch anything. Well, thankfully the Pokedex also makes this easy by stating that the metal composing its body is thought to be a curious substance that is not of this earth. So it's some sort of alien metal we don't know about. Oh, Clefki. You didn't think I forgot about Clefki like everyone else does, do you? Well, Clefki is a key ring, or it's a small sentient ring that has a crow-like brain and wants to steal and hold on to all of the keys it comes across because its head is a key. Clefki without keys looks like a weird stick with a ball and a key head. Seriously, look at it. This Pokemon is most likely just made out of low-grade steel, just like a lot of key rings. Who would have thought that? I was almost making this video kind of pointless. Mm, I thought it would be more interesting. But really, steel is such an integral part of our society that it's hard to base something off of metal and just have it not be steel or iron. Really, iron is just steel but less carbon atoms in between the bonds. The legendary Heatran is a molten pile of metal that lives in caves near lava tubes. Heatran is made of rugged steel as stated by his Pokedex entry, and actually isn't even molten anyways. Heatran can harden, but due to its internal body heat, it does melt in some spots. It actually has boiling blood even, so it is believed that it needs to stay near volcanic activity so that it wastes less energy just trying to stay alive. Solgaleo is the Pokemon representative of the sun, which confused some people as to why it's psychic steel type and not psychic fire, and the answer to that is an easy one. The sun, and stars in general, aren't fire at all. They're molten balls of gas and plasma, with some molten metals in there too. Mostly iron, in fact. In fact, some scientists believe that the sun isn't mostly hydrogen anymore, but instead is mostly iron. In fact, when the universe began, there were only a few elements, the ones at the top of the periodic table. But when a big enough star explodes in a supernova, all that energy makes it possible for atoms to combine and create the heavier elements. Thus, exploding suns is why we have metals at all. As for what metal Sogaleo is, it's most likely iron under its fur, since the sun is mostly iron and hydrogen. Also, I have a whole video about the alchemic origins of Solgaleo right here. It also answers all these other questions about Solgaleo. Solgaleo's neat. Now let's talk about Ultra Beasts, which are Pokemon from another dimension or another universe. There are two Steel Ultra Beasts, Cartana and Celesteela. Wait, that one has steel in its name. Well, I guess it's steel. That was easy. The name is pretty funny. It's Celestial Steel and Stella, which is Latin for star. But looking at its Pokedex entries, maybe not. It is said to be able to take incredible heat as it shoots fire. It's also reminiscent of a rocket. NASA rocket nozzles are made out of stainless steel, but they can't actually take the heat that they need to, so they spray liquid nitrogen on the walls to keep it from melting. Even tungsten, the hardest metal to melt, still melts at 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 1650C. That's 300 degrees Fahrenheit less than the engine makes. So instead of using expensive tungsten, they just use cheaper steel and cool it down. This Ultra Beast is most likely made of various space metals, or maybe it is tungsten, lined with a heat-resistant coating and somehow it just doesn't get as hot. Cartana, though, looks like origami and is quite thin. Its weight is almost nothing, coming in at 0.1 kilograms. That's the same weight as Flabebe, which is only four inches while Cartana is a foot tall, which is still small, but still. This must mean it is crazy thin or it is a very light metal. It looks like paper, but paper isn't nearly strong enough for Cartana's feet and also wouldn't give it the steel typing. It is possible that it is an aluminum steel mix or possibly only aluminum, sacrificing the rigidity of steel for the speed and and light weightness of aluminum, or possibly a titanium alloy mix to give it strength. It is said to be strong enough to cut a steel tower in one slice, though this leads me to believe that it is some sort of fictional alien metal that is able to shear down to a single molecular blade, kind of like obsidian. Still though, based on the science we know today, that is completely impossible. So, fictional alien metal it is. It does come from another universe. That was easy. For the next category, let's look at steel type Pokemon that are known to not be made of metal, but have the characteristics of metal or strong as metal body parts. Meaning, like we mentioned earlier, these Pokemon are as hard as metal, but are not actually metal. Skarmory, Shieldeon, and Bastodon. Skarmory, surprisingly, is not made of steel, or at least, not really? Ugh, this one's complicated. It has steel-like wings that have become as strong as steel from healing the constant abuse that they receive in their nests that are made of briar bushes. Oh hey, I just hatched and now I'm bleeding everywhere. Thanks for the amazing nest, Mom! But there is a bit of debate between the games, as some games like Silver, X, Soul Silver, and Fire Red state that they are made by the chicks living in thorns, so they heal constantly, making them stronger and stronger to the point of being feathers as strong as steel. 
while other games like Moon and Sapphire state that they are steel, but they can also fall off once they become damaged and regrow completely. People in ancient Alola even used their feathers as swords, so it is steel, or is it feather as strong as steel? Was it just feather that magically became as strong as steel by becoming literally steel? I suppose so, though I don't know how that's possible, but yeah, there you go. Pokemon, yeah, fiction. And then they can just regrow the steel perfectly fine. Hmm. Shieldon and Bastiodon are both ancient dinosaur Pokemon. Bastiodon boasts the highest defense and special defense score of any of the fossil Pokemon, by the way. Both Pokemon are based loosely off of the Protoceratops, or Chasmosaurus, both dinosaurs with very large heads, although in real life these head plates were not as strong as you would think. All they really did was make the dinosaur look larger and thus more imposing, warding off any predators. In the case of Shieldon, the Shield Pokemon, it's surprising to learn that its shield only looks like metal. It actually isn't. As its Pokedex entries state, the skin on its face is very hard hide, and it has a habit of polishing it by rubbing against trees. So their shield faces are just really, really tough skin, like the skin of a rhino with perhaps a hard bone underneath. And Bastiodon continues this. And now the final category. We have Pokemon with metal that is pretty much unknown as to where the metal comes from. In other words, this is miscellaneous, or uh, it's hard, I don't know, it, uh, help. Empoleon is a Napoleonic penguin that has always been one of the coolest starters in my book. In the Pokedex entries, it states that it uses the sharp part of its fin to cut the ice to swim faster in the Arctic. Many boats have fins and protrusions called icebreakers that help the ship from getting stuck in the ice. This metal is made of very high-strength steel. The fins on Empoleon are possibly made of a similar steel, but it is unknown as to if this Pokemon grows the steel naturally or if it finds the steel and makes a fin cover from icebreaker ships that get abandoned, I, or even if it like is it's just Skarmory again. It just beats the side of its fins repeatedly until they get strong enough. I just, I, I don't know. There's not enough information. Excadrill drills are said to be strong steel that can bore through iron plates. These drills are most likely made of a cobalt steel mix. The cobalt gives the steel a much higher heat resistance without sacrificing the toughness of the steel. This would allow it to drill faster and even through tougher things like iron even cast iron. But again, it is not explained how it gets these drills, as Drillbur doesn't have metal claws, but it could be the same logic again with Skarmory. Having used the claws so rapidly so much, they became stronger and stronger, like a callus, and just eventually developed into this mixture. That is, of course, 100% theory, though. Though really, I suppose that's what most of this video is. So now we know, or at least have an idea, about what types of metal each of the Steel Pokémon are. Or at least, what they should be. But the real question is, are these Pokémon really alive? I mean, some of them obviously are, but what about some of the not-so-looking-alive ones? Are there actual biological parts going through all this metal? What makes things living is actually pretty simple. Scientists have a list for this kind of stuff. Living things obtain and use energy. Living things grow and develop. Living things reproduce. Living things respond to their environment. Living things adapt to their environment. And living things are made of cells. So if a Pokemon can do all of that, it's technically living. Let's take one of the solid or fully metal Pokemon like Beldum. It uses energy, it can evolve and learn, we know that they can reproduce somehow, and they can respond to stimuli and adapt to it. The last one, made of cells though, uh, this is the only one I can't really prove as I can't study the cells. It's impossible to determine this from anything that we've been shown in Pokemon. So, uh, I really don't know. Are they more like animals? Or are they more like robots? If robots, then are they alive? Yeah. In the case of Pokemon, there is a sense of magic involved, of course. In fact, in ancient times, people referred to Pokemon as magical creatures. And the more and more we learn about them, the more and more it seems to be the case. So hit subscribe and join me on my journey as I continue to unlock more details about the power that's inside. Up next, it's Rock Pokemon and Crystalline Aura. I hope to see you there, and until then, remember to never stop using that noggin.